Justice Samuel Alito has recently found himself at the center of controversy with his actions raising serious questions about his commitment to judicial ethics and impartiality. Alito has stubbornly refused to recuse himself from several high-profile cases before the Supreme Court, including those involving Donald Trump and the Stop the Steal movement. Despite clear conflicts of interest, he remains unmoved, insisting on his participation in decisions where his objectivity is highly questionable. Adding fuel to the fire, the New York Times uncovered that Alito has been flying political flags outside his homes. Notably, an upside-down American flag appeared in the aftermath of January 6, 2021, and an Appeal to Heaven flag was displayed in the summer of 2023. These symbols are not mere decorations, but potent political statements that have alarmed many who expect a Supreme Court justice to remain neutral and above partisan displays. Critics argue that Alito's public display of these flags should disqualify him from adjudicating cases related to Trump's alleged election interference. His blatant refusal to recuse himself, communicated via a dismissive letter to senior Democrats, flagrantly disregards the most basic principles of judicial ethics. U.S. District Judge Michael Ponser has voiced his concern over Alito's conduct, emphasizing that the judiciary relies on public trust. By openly taking sides, Alito risks eroding this trust, undermining the very foundation of the judicial system. Ponser's words highlight a critical issue. If judges are perceived as biased, the integrity of the courts is compromised. In a further display of arrogance, Alito recently claimed in an interview that Congress lacks the authority to impose a code of ethics on the Supreme Court. This statement underscores his apparent belief that the highest court in the land should operate without ethical oversight, a notion that many find deeply troubling. Justice Alito's recent actions have sparked widespread debate and concern about his suitability for the bench. His behavior not only casts a shadow over his own integrity, but also threatens to damage the public's trust in the Supreme Court as a whole. Um, Ian, let me just show you one more piece of Emily Baden on, uh, that I just think is an important piece of the fact pattern, that the Alitos were never in any, um, the Alitos had security. Here she is talking about that. They have a security detail that parks in front of their house or like in front of the house across the street from them. We are four or five houses away. Um, and sometimes that detail would be in front of our house, which, you know, obviously I can't say for sure. I don't know what their motivation was, but we did take it as intimidating, especially when that same car reappeared in front of our house the day the New York Times article came out. And I don't know what else we're supposed to get from that. Let me just say, I am for anyone in public life who feels threatened having all the security they can muster and all that is available to them. It is good that he had a detail. But this moving of the car and her feeling uh, called out by Mrs. Alito using her first and last name are pieces of the story not represented in Mr. Alito's interview with Shannon Bream of Fox News when the story first broke. Yeah, no, that's right. I mean, the th I guess I am going to echo what Senator Whitehouse said in the clip that you played earlier, which is that the legal obligation on Justice Alito isn't just that he avoids impropriety, it's that he avoids the appearance of impropriety. I mean, that's what the Code of Judicial Ethics says. Um, it's that, you know, what the federal statute dealing with recusal said is that he avoids not just bias, but the appearance of partiality. And so you have a special obligation when you're at that level. You know, there's a lot of confusion here about, you know, maybe Alito just misremembered what happens. Who knows why the security vehicle was parked next to the house? But if you create the appearance that you're using your security to intimidate a, a, a private citizen, that is not allowed. I mean, uh, again, we are talking about the most powerful, one of the most powerful people in the country. He blames it on his wife. You may have heard the phrase Caesar's wife before, you, you, you know, <laughs> when you are that important, you have an obligation, even if you're a member of the family. Um, let me um, read this to you, Harry Lippman. This is from the DOJ Justice Manual on Judicial Disqualification. Quote, 
any justice, judge, or magistrate of the United States shall disqualify himself or herself in any proceeding in which his or her impartiality might reasonably be questioned. It seems like we're 10 train stops past reasonable when you've got two flags also carried by the insurrectionists on your two different properties.